Hi, everybody. Welcome into another edition of our Wednesday with the Flames. My name is Alan York. Got a great guest lined up here today, Edmonds basketball coach Richie McKay. A couple of housekeeping duties before we get going. You can submit questions if you'd like to LFSN at liberty.edu. Also, as you watch this today, we've got a Q&A section. You can type in some comments or questions if you'd like, and uh, we'll get the coach coming up here in a couple of seconds. Uh, today's uh, Wednesday with the Flames is brought to you in part by a couple of number of our sponsors, including Foster Fuels and Carter Bank and Trust. We've already got some questions populated for Coach, but first things first, let's bring in the head coach of the men's basketball team, Richie McKay. And Coach, good to catch up with you. Thanks for taking a few minutes. Uh, you're looking great, and uh, happy birthday, by the way. Yeah, thank you, A.Y. Uh, as you well know, when you get to be our age, we don't uh, like to make uh, make it too public that uh, we're celebrating another birthday, but uh, appreciate it. Man. So you've got some time to celebrate the birthday. Uh, what What is on the docket today? And again, you mentioned not celebrating it much, but uh, we do want to congratulate you on that. Are you a, a cake guy, ice cream? And what's Julie and the kids have lined up? Uh, I'm an everything guy, uh, unfortunately, yeah. um, but no, I think we'll have dinner together and uh, I'm sure my wife will either make my favorite cookies or have a cake ready for me, which uh, I will delight in, pay for, but I will delight in. But uh, no, nothing special, man. I, I'm just blessed to uh, have the family that I do and uh, God has been so good to me and, and the ones that I love that uh, privilege to celebrate another year of life. You mentioned cooking cake. I got to bring up. Do you, what? What cookie preference do you have? So my wife Julie makes these uh, oatmeal kind of chocolate chip cookies. They're unbelievable. Like they, they really are bar none. If you, if you tasted one ever, you would ask her to make you those cookies again. And then Chelsea Mangino, who's a extraordinary baker on our staff, she, uh, she made some like pumpkin muffins today and. Uh, I've already had two of them. <clears throat> this is gonna be a this is gonna be a cheat day. You know, I really don't have cheat days. I have every day is a cheat day, and then every once in a while, I'll have a healthy meal. I'm, I'm, I'm on your I'm on your plan. That's for sure. I was gonna ask if you had to get Henry Barrera, your strength coach's approval for this, but I'm gonna imagine no on today. Yeah, no, I'm hiding it from Coach Barrera. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, good to catch up with you. We got questions lined up. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, kind of want to get over the uh, the pandemic of what we're in right now. Um, I think we, we do want to ask you kind of how things are with your team right now. I know the kids are wanting to get back and get some shots up if they could, and they're scattered throughout wherever they are. But uh, how have the last couple of weeks, month been since we caught up with you uh, in the Vine Center back in uh, mid-March? Uh, yeah, hey, well, it's been, uh, you know, like I've mentioned before, it's just been a, maybe a reshaping of our perspective. Uh, obviously, we missed out on the NCAA tournament, but uh, there are a lot uh, more things that, uh, greater things that others have suffered or had to endure. So uh, I, I just think for us, our guys, we've tried to stay connected. Uh, Zoom has been popular. Uh, there are some guys that are still in town and uh, although we can't work out with them, obviously they'll come by the office. We have some some hybrid hours that uh, we're trying to adhere to. Uh, but for the most part, I think for, for me, AY, I think it's been good for us in the sense that we get a chance to really appreciate or to operate out of a deep sense of gratitude for what we do have and feel really blessed to be a part of the Liberty family. And, uh, and then to be able to coach such a great group of young men uh, I, I truly mean this. It's my privilege. So just trying to serve them any way we can. And uh, I, I know uh, soon we'll be able to work with them again. And I hope, you know, you hear that just go back to normal. I hope we don't ever go back to normal. I hope through this pandemic we grow and, and learn. I heard a great quote from uh, Mike Rhodes, uh, the VCU head coach the other day. He said, if learning becomes important to them, they'll always continue to improve. And, and man, I think there's, we can really grasp that as, as believers, as, as followers of God's word. We're just constant learners and view ourselves that way instead of maybe get shamed by our mistakes.
to learning and growing, uh, I think that's going to be healthy for all of us. Your team is in such a good place culturally, spiritually, that I do think the steps that you take, even off the floor, Richie, help your staff, help your student athletes navigate through a time like this. Indirectly, you're not thinking about it at the time when you pour into them spiritually. But now, as I present that to you, um, do you, do you feel that what your staff and your team has built has helped get your players and staff through this? Uh, yeah, I, I think God has been faithful to, to us. and We've been able to attract, because of our university and its mission, uh, and the kind of guys that uh, we've tried to pursue as a coaching staff, I think we've be, been able to create a culture that's healthy and uh, a perspective that maybe is uh, is out of a spiritual foundation as opposed to uh, one just based on circumstances. Because you and I both know, AY, circumstances change, but principles never do. And I think when you're living out of what God's word says about you, or you really believe and trust in the truth of his word, I think you can endure some of those harder times because you know that even in difficult times or in lack, we can grow. And ultimately, growth leads to maturity. And that, that's something that we all want as as individuals. Coach, you had a phenomenal uh, session with Matt Warner that was a week ago. Um, and he talked about not many teams get to end the year hoisting a trophy. You got to do that. And when it comes to having closure from 1920, is it okay to not have closure? And do we get caught up in that uh, thought of, okay, I can leave this behind and move on? Do, do we get caught up in that too much, you think? <laughs> Great question, anyway. I, honestly, I heard a guy, RJ Brash, he's a good friend of Coach Barreras. He said, uh, two things will rob you of your peace and your joy. The first is a what about me attitude. And the second is you always ask the question, what if? And I, I think it's only fair. You know, we had a team 30 and four that was really confident, that had some experience in the NCAA tournament, a little bit of success. Uh, we, we all wonder that what if. But it'll drive you crazy if, uh, if yeah. you think about it yeah, too much. And uh, for me, the moment that I'll remember AY is just that the vines on the last game of the 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 building's existence. It was it was fabulous, at least for basketball. The, the, our crowd, Flames Nation, was outstanding. Our students were incredible. Uh, our the, the Liberty family, it was just awesome, man. It was it was neat and uh, and an honor for me. I know I speak with for our team and our staff. We were privileged by their support, and uh, and fortunately, we were able to. Beat a really good Lipscomb team, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try and marinate on that as opposed to the what ifs. I do think we miss real talk. Everyone says, you know, can you be the Gonzaga of the East? And uh, I do think we missed out on an opportunity because Gonzaga became Gonzaga not because they won regular season championships, because they won in the NCAA tournament. And you know, we worked and and labored hard, and our guys uh, I'm referencing they worked and labored hard to get to this point and to not have a chance to win in advance. I just think we may have missed out on an opportunity for the nation to see Liberty University and our, our program, but uh, I still think there's good things on the horizon for us and we're gonna continue to pursue being, uh, being the best we can. With your team coming back here in 2021, I do want you to speak of your four seniors that left uh, an impression that may not be reached again in, in Liberty basketball and the effect they've had on these guys coming back to show them the blueprint. This is what work goes into back to back championships. And yeah. this is what we need to do. And a lot of those guys are coming back, but that senior class and the, the stamp they put with the kids coming back, uh, how, how deep are those roots? Yeah. You know, well, you were around us enough to know those dudes were fun to coach fun to be around. We're, we're going to miss that. Um, what I loved about them was their uh, sac sacrificial nature, that they were willing to put the team and its success above their own individual goals and aspirations. And I think what that did for us, it catapulted uh, an opportunity to, to have a chance to touch greatness. 
in remember when Kentucky, I think it's Coach Patino's first or second year there, I can't remember which, but they retired the jerseys and they called them the uh, the unforgettables, I think it was, like 31, 0, 1, and, and 11, very well could be retired because of what those four guys, Scotty, Mayo, Caleb, and Georgie did for our basketball program. They, they should be remembered for as long as, as this program exists because I, I think they had such a huge hand and part into making our program uh, what it is today. As we talk here today, Richie, uh, again, when we'll all be able to get back together, we don't really know. I think uh, everybody is you know, practicing the social distancing and being safe. And what are some of those things that when you do get uh, your student athletes back and the new kids coming in, what are some of those uh, things that uh, typically when do the freshmen get on campus, I guess, and then when do these workouts start and how delayed right now have basketball teams been from building a foundation for 2021? Yeah, typically the freshmen would arrive sometime early June. Uh, obviously, we can't do anything until the stay at home is, uh, that the governor imposed is, is lifted. So we're still planning on summer school at this uh, at this moment, but as you well know, with COVID-19, it's always a fluid uh, situation. So, uh, but I, I think for for our guys who can't work out, who do have access to a gym, they've been working hard, and uh, and that's who they are. That's kind of who we recruit. So I'm pleased with that. Uh, but I, I think AY for me, I know that this team coming up in 2021 will be different than the team we had last year. Because yeah. you, you can yeah. never, I think it's it's sometimes a little bit of a seduction to think that you can replicate uh, a team or you can put guys in positions that other people leave. Like there's there's only one Scotty James and there's only one Georgie Pacheco Ortiz. So I, I want to learn our guys to the degree that uh, that I knew the others. And, and I think I, I speak for our staff when I say that. Because although we do have some guys returning, we have a lot of new guys that are very inexperienced. So, uh, but but I, I really believe that this group that we have coming up is going to have a chance to compete for a conference championship as well, uh, because of what I've seen from them so far. And uh, I think guys will just will, they'll emerge in the roles like we think four or five years ago. You weren't talking about Scotty James or Mile Baxter Bell and. It, Oddly enough, everyone asks, how are you going to replace Mayo? Mayo played 17 minutes a game as, uh, his senior season. Like, it, not many people ask about how do, you, how do you replace a guy that played 17 minutes a game. But I, I just think he took advantage of the minutes he got. And I think you'll see that from a lot of these new faces. Del Blanc, I think we'll all have of Mayo's that three at the end of the game. And I know we had him on radio when the game was over. And he was unconsolable, uh, just tears of joy. And just each, you never know how much people mean to people until you ask them about them. And we said, you know, what what does this program mean to you? And he says, I can't put it into words. And yeah. I just, we all got wrapped up in the emotion of that day. I mean, went back and listened to the radio broadcast, not to hear me, but just to listen to the crowd and how thirsty fans have been for a competitive basketball program. And since you've been back, it's been uh, one step late on to another. And if, if that is the last moment of this season in the Vine Center, what an incredible moment it was. So uh, thank you for uh, doing what you've done. Uh, for this basketball program. We're about halfway done here, Coach. I do have some questions uh, we want to get to. And uh, for those fans tuning in, uh, today's uh, broadcast of our Wednesday with the Flames brought to you by Runk and Pratt. Liberty would like to thank Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities, the Kirkley Hotel, a trademark collection by Wyndham and Entwined Events. All right, Coach, let's get to some questions. And and one question coming in is about the new Liberty Basketball Arena, and uh, you'll share it with volleyball. Uh, what are is the steps next to getting in there? And um, obviously, a lot of the stuff has to be panned out and finished up. But what are you hearing uh, as far as official move-in date and uh, things like that? 
Well, first of all, how blessed are we to have uh, an administration um, that would provide for us a, a, an arena like the, the new arena? Like, I, I think it's, it's really unprecedented, fabulous, uh, especially for, uh, for this level. So thank you to President Falwell, you know, and all those on his staff, as well as Ian McCall, Mickey Gritty, and, and those, because I, I think us, uh, I, I know Coach Green, Coach Johnson, myself, we're, we're all really, really excited about moving in. Uh, we're supposedly going to be on track on, uh, again, it's fluid with, uh, with right. the pandemic we reside in, but I think we have a, a home opener schedule for November 10th, and uh, that contract's not signed yet, but we will play on the opening night. And uh, and I, I, I'm not sure when volleyball opens their season, but I know uh, they're scheduled to play in there. I just don't know when. Uh, but we're really excited about being able to move in there. I think it'll be, Alan, it, the plans that I saw were unbelievable. Like, it is first class. It's everything we do at this university is in pursuit of that excellence. So I'm not surprised, but I think it'll be a great experience for, uh, for our, our fans and, uh, and our student body. Speaking of the schedule, obviously not using this platform to release anything, but when do you expect maybe some of the non-conference games publicly being announced? Uh, hopefully soon. Uh, okay. Okay. We, we just have some contracts that have yet to come in, and uh, and there's a, a tournament that uh, that we were invited to that, uh, again, is it's a little fluid just because of the pandemic and its location, yet uh, – Scheduling has not been easy as our program has evolved. We, uh, the good news is we've been invited to more tournaments or mutual games than, than we had been before. Uh, the bad news is it's really hard to, to play some high majors. Uh, they, they sometimes uh, have a, maybe a different scheduling philosophy in the non-conference, especially with most leagues going to 20 games. So, uh, But it is what it is, and we're trying to make it as competitive as, as we can to prepare our guys for the ASUN conference schedule. You mentioned some of these uh, tournaments. I know Liberty typically plays in a couple of games before uh, the Christmas break, like you did in DC this past year. Kind of what goes into, this is a question sent in by some of the fans. Uh, what, what goes into those in-season tournaments? How do you decide what is a good fit, what is not a good fit? And they were speaking specifically about the Washington uh, tournament last year and kind of how schools get invited and uh, things like that. Yeah, I, I think for for mid majors, we're always trying to schedule games that can help our net ranking, uh, also help prepare us for our conference regular season. And in the DC case, it was a drivable. It was right before break, so we could send our guys home from there. Um, there weren't a lot of fans. We were playing in the the G League arena for the Washington Wizards, the Go-Go. And, uh, and it was a good event. We played Akron and, uh, and Towson, two really competitive games. And, uh, and I think it really helped our guys. Uh, yet, you're, again, you got to take what you can get sometimes, AY. And for mid-majors, uh, the, the, you, you, especially if you achieved a little bit of success or the appearance of some success, not everyone is willing to play you at the high major level. And, uh, and it, again, it's no indictment to those institutions, but they get games in their conference schedule that will improve their net just by playing their net ranking just by playing those teams in their conference. And we don't get afforded that, so we got to look for opportunities to schedule that where, whenever, and wherever we can. You see football schedules. I'm just asking this for the fans tuning in. Football schedules are years in advance. Some of these meetings. How how far out do basketball teams typically schedule games? Typically, it's year to year, season by season. Yet, when you enter into home and home agreements, uh, let's say we were playing like when we first got here, VCU, we did a home and home with. We went there first. They came there the next year, and uh, and again, those are really easy to do when your team is in the ranked in the 200s they're not so hard to do when when you uh, when you have a team that's had some uh, a little bit of success but uh, we we don't schedule as far out as football and uh and in some cases i think it wouldn't be a bad idea but uh not not common because of how volatile uh, coaching uh, coaching jobs and changes are 
Got some questions in about you know personnel for next year. We'll we'll pick a couple here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, you announced Keegan McDowell uh, coming back for his redshirt junior year. Uh, the excitement around Keegan and uh, the development of him as he redshirted this past year. Yeah, I'm actually glad that question was asked. I, I think for some, they would have a little bit of negativity towards Keegan because he decided to transfer right before the season started. And though I was frustrated with that decision at the time, <clears throat> I completely understood it uh, because guys want to play and they have dreams that uh, and aspirations that they've, they've had for a long time. So it was an amazing God thing, honestly, AY, him coming back. Uh, we were headed down the road, going to recruit another big, and uh, Keegan asked to meet with me. And, uh, and man, uh, I could see in his face, in his countenance, his love for liberty, his desire to be a part of our family again, and not only a little bit of remorse, but also a great sense of maturity and gratitude uh, just for me taking the meeting. And man, I slept on it a night or two, and God put on my heart, this is not about pieces, it's about people. And mm -hmm. Keegan McDowell is one of the finest people that I've ever come in contact with. So. Uh, it, it wasn't necessarily, it didn't fit into the, the scheme of our depth chart or whatever, but I know out of an obedience to what was on my spirit, it was the right thing to do. And he's been fabulous in his return. Uh, I think he's going to add a ton of value to this team and our program. And I'm really excited he came back. And, and I think our campus is better with him being a part of it. So uh, I'm Again, I'm sure some will, will think, well, we need another big man or, you know, why bring a guy back that that walked out on us? You yeah. know why? I, I left Liberty my first time and uh, and I was privileged enough to come back. So uh, I think it's going to work out well for Keegan and for us. And again, great shooter uh, can uh, really help this team on both ends of the floor. So look forward to having Keegan back. Also, Chris Parker, uh, part of your uh, recruiting class coming in. We'll kind of start with him, a transfer from Henderson State. Uh, what do the fans not know about Chris Parker? And uh, maybe uh, I'm not going to, I know you're not going to compare him to somebody else, so we won't ask you about that, but just Chris Parker and uh, why he's a good fit for your team. Uh, I really enjoyed getting to know Chris. He's, uh, he's a terrific young man. He fits into our fabric for sure. Uh, really good player. He can score the basketball. Kind of a combination guard, uh, can run some point, play some two. Uh, and the thing I like best about him, AY, is he's been a winner everywhere he's gone. And I, I think, you know, one of the strongest endorsements was Lavelle Cabell and what he said about him. So uh, I think he's going to have a chance to compete right away for minutes. And uh, obviously there's a, there's a fairly couple of uh, big holes that uh, need to be filled in terms of Caleb and uh, Georgie's departure on the guard line. Uh, but I really like the guys that we've signed, and uh, including Chris and, uh, and the guys we have returning to maybe fit into that role. I, it'll be really competitive. <clears throat> we'll be different. We'll play differently, AY. But, uh, but again, I, I like our pieces a ton. And I'm not afraid. I'm not stuck in my ways offensively uh, to experiment a little bit, given our personnel. I'm challenged by that. But uh, I, I really do like our pieces. Chris is a uh, part of that incoming class, along with Isaiah Warfield, Jonathan Jackson, Drake Dobbs, and Micaiah Abi. Of those other four guys, Coach, uh, hard to tell now who will have the biggest impact, but uh, they all come in wanting to get minutes, and I'm sure they'll have opportunities uh, to compete for that. Uh, with the other four guys, uh, anything stick out about the class in general that uh, excites you? Well, Drake Dobbs was uh, was a player of the year candidate in a state that has some 20 Division One players. And again, we were really fortunate to be on him early because I think he's he's a high major recruit. Isaiah Warfield, I think, is the highest ranked player I've heard that uh, that we've signed. Uh, yeah. that we've signed, not committed, because I think there's some others that are rated high highly as well. Um, and I can't say much more about that. Um, right. Jonathan Jackson, who I've recruited, I think he was in the eighth grade when I first got to know him. So uh, I think he's going to make a, a great impact. And, uh, and then Makai Abi, probably the least 
uh, of the fanfare uh, recruits, but uh, I saw him last year in Houston, and uh, and I loved him. I just thought, man, this kid's got a real chance. He's a he's a versatile forward that uh, I think is multi-positioned and has a major upside. So I'm excited about our entire class, AY, and I also really like our returners. You know, Josh Price didn't play much last year. Martin Maid set out, but those two those two kids will have a chance as well. Uh, Shiloh and Kyle will headline. You know, maybe the younger guys, but uh, we we've got a group that I think our practice will be really competitive. I'm catching up with Kyle Road on a video chat tomorrow, and uh, look forward to catching up with with him uh, and, and the entire returning, you know, players you got coming back. Uh, really speak high of the program and what they are. And um, as we kind of wrap things up here, Coach, one person had a question about Martin Maid, who did come back to practice once he came back from his knee injury uh, during this past season. Uh, what kind of impact can he make? Uh, and that question's come in uh, from one of our fans here. Yeah, he's a worker. He's got a chance. His talent level, he's really athletic. Uh, he definitely has a chance. But AY, it would be unfair for me, you know, with eight or nine guys in the backcourt, you know, yep. we're, we're going to have a four-guard lineup more often than not is my guess, although uh, I'm not quite sure how it will play out yet, so I'm open to it. But there will be a lot of competition for minutes, and uh, and we want that. Like, again, uh, this is a program that has been built on the right things, and that's people first. And I think anytime you have a great teammate, one that's fully invested, you've got a chance to be able to compete for, for much. So. Uh, Martin, as well as the others, I'm excited about. A couple more thoughts here. Were you able to watch the last dance the other night? I was. I got to, I got a chance to see the goat. I I think the whole country is uh, enamored in this uh, ten part series of which it's coming out in two hour increments. Um, I watched it as well. That was um, during my impressionable years in high school and junior high. So, uh, what'd you think of it? Uh, I thought it was good. I thought there were some uh, some really insightful things in there. It gives you a behind the, the scenes look, and uh, uh, I, I think Michael Jordan, like you, went, I mean, he was. You knew when the Bulls were coming on, you'd want to go watch the, the the television set because you got to see MJ. I think he influenced the game for generations. And uh, although I'm a huge fan of Steph Curry and all of our players, most of them yeah. think LeBron is the greatest of all time. I think all of them have some greatness that we can all appreciate and admire. I'm curious, though, not not your opinion on this, but I'm just talking, you know, friend, friend. I keep reading stories about The Last Dance and how people's perceptions of Michael Jordan might change because of how um, he's portrayed in this. I mean, the first two hours I saw him sitting there didn't change my perception of him. He demanded things. He wanted to win and so winners demand things on the court and i don't know um they'll get deeper into that 97 98 season i'm sure as we watch it but uh the first two hours is great i look forward to uh, the rest of the uh episodes as well yeah i i think like many i could have watched all 10 episodes that night i would i would have just taken the all-nighter i haven't done one of those since college but it was uh, it was fascinating tv for sure all right. Well, Coach, uh, 30 minutes is uh, up here. We appreciate your time. Always uh, enjoy seeing you and uh, sharing laughs and smiles and uh, look forward to catching up face-to-face -face and give you an elbow bump next time, okay? Hey, well, thanks for all you do, man. Appreciate it, and uh, thanks for having me on today. All right, Coach. Go Flames.